We're very grateful to have Alexandre Blanchot from Denmark. We have uh, also uh, uh, Bordeaux from Germany, Mannheim. We have uh, Basel with us. We have Brussels with us. So we really have a community of Europeans here to help uh, the companies and help us all understand the European uh, opportunities. With uh, no further ado, Thomas, do you want to get us started and then we can go into the presentations? Okay, great. Thank you very much, Alice. Hi, everybody. My name is Thomas. I'm in charge of economic and commercial issues at Strasbourg United States General Consulate since November 2018. And we are glad at Strasbourg Consulate and uh, more broadly at Paris Embassy to be partners of the operation. Before presenting to you very briefly what we can do and what we cannot do, I have a few sentences from the United States Embassy in Paris that I have to read to you. When Americans come to Strasbourg and elsewhere in France, we have a deep and inexpressible sense that we have landed on a familiar ground. The United States inherited a legacy of core institutional and cultural values from Europe and from France in particular. French and American citizens have the freedom to chase their dream and pursue excellence. They are secure in their property and protected by the rule of law. Together, we believe that those who create, innovate, and flourish should not only work to improve their own lives, but serve their neighbors as well. This is the message from Paris Embassy. Now, what can we say on the ground? In 2018, US export to the French Grand Est region reached 2.7 billion of euros, and Strasbourg ecosystem has been an important gateway for many US companies to enter the European market, particularly in the medical technology sector. Within the US embassy and, the, and wider the US government, we have some maybe helpful programs and other resources that we would like to mention. First, I have to mention, to mention the US Export Assistance Center in Boston, which is staffed with commerce department professionals who can explain, explain commerce's trade promotion services and programs how much they cost, which market to take a look at, and any other types of US government support available to US exporters. The Small Business Administration has also a program that may be of interest for you, which is called STEP, State Trade Expansion Program. Uh, and, but I will let you uh, contact the US Export Assistance Center in Boston, who can definitely give you more information on this topic. Here on the ground in Strasbourg, what can we do? We are a very small team in Strasbourg, so we work very closely with the foreign commercial service at our embassy in Paris. We can provide, provide basic support to businesses looking to invest in the region, including putting startups in touch with regional and local officials and other on-site businesses, advising businesses on trade missions, and coordinating promotional activities, including trade shows. We have also an important role of reporting and commercial watch, that, which is important regarding US companies, particularly when these companies face problems like, for example, unfair competition. We can also help you to integrate the local communities. It can be the economic community, for example, each year we organize a reception for US companies with some representatives of economic institutions so as to create synergies between US actors and local ones. And integrate, of course, the US community. You know, in the Grand Est region in France, approximately 5,000 Americans live in the region. And there are seven very active associations of Americans, like Americans in Alsace, Alsace Etats-Unis, or YATS. One last information, we also encourage you to register on the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program, another STEP program, quite totally different from the first I have mentioned. This program allows you to receive security alerts for your trip to Europe. It's a free service for Americans going abroad who can receive security information from the embassy and with an emergency contact system. Thank you for your time today and we look forward to welcoming you in Strasbourg. Excellent, thank you, Thomas, thank you. So basically also today you'll see the network we've put together for you is everyone you need to help you access the European market. So Thomas is 
uh, a very central uh, part for U.S. companies. So thank you, Thomas. So Delphine, if you want to go, uh, the floor is all yours. Any questions for, for Thomas, feel free to put them in, in, in the chat. Thank you, Alistair. Can I share my screen? Yes. So here we go. So, do you see it properly? Yes. yes. Excellent. So, uh, thank you. Uh, good day, everybody. So, my name is uh, Delphine Krieger. I'm working for the Strasbourg Euro Metropolis, and I'm in charge of uh, innovation and international business development. Today, I'm just going to introduce you very slightly about Strasbourg, so you have an idea where it's located, and a little bit how we work here to welcome uh, some of the companies, foreign companies, and especially some of the American companies coming here. So uh, we were in Boston last year, uh, this year, so what's next? And we will be very happy to welcome you here in Strasbourg. Um, we have to, uh, First, one thing which is very important to mention is that uh, Strasbourg is the European capital. It's a real power hub, basically, uh, which means that that's where the European laws, treaties, and all directives that uh, regulate, basically, the markets uh, are voted. And uh, that means that we have a, a, a real um, important uh, diplomatic representation uh, that allows you, basically, to bridge more than 50 Euro, uh, European economies just at once. Uh, coming here at the European Parliament. And um, basically, it's uh, one of your best springboards to reach the entire European market, especially uh, when you talk about regulation and, uh, and official approach, approaches. Uh, the other thing that uh, I also want to mention very quickly is the uh, Strasbourg location. It's a very strategic border location. Uh, Strasbourg is right at the border with Germany in the heart of the Upper Rhine region which is uh, one of the most competitive, strongest, and biggest market within Europe, with uh, the proximity of Germany, Switzerland, uh, Luxembourg, Belgium. Um, so it's about 6 million inhabitants, which represent about Denmark, and it's one of the most competitive and, uh, region in, in Europe. So from Strasbourg, basically, everything is mostly within two hours of our, your reach, and with a density of population and companies and uh, academic uh, excellence, which is quite uh, uh, Im important. So a few key figures, so you have an idea. Well, Strasbourg area, uh, it's about uh, uh, a little bit more than 5,000 companies, almost 6,000 companies, and that was the figure from 2018. Uh, as uh, Thomas mentioned it earlier, there is a lot of U.S. Uh, nationals, but they actually came also with a lot of U.S. companies. We have uh, companies, big companies like Lilly or Quintiles. Um, so that's just a few, but it's very interesting to know that it's also uh, the, the capital of the first region for foreign investment in France in 2019. Uh, which uh, says a lot about the way we can welcome foreign companies and, well, uh, and foreign investors. Um, for, as an example, for example, just uh, um, last year, we had about 150 million raised just for the health sector. And uh, what is also important is to say that uh, uh, Strasbourg represents about 75% of the total of uh, uh, startup creation of the Great East region. Uh, that's just to tell you that uh, uh, as a territory, it's definitely a, a very strong economic uh, uh, motor here. And uh, basically, we, we play that role as a leadership uh, uh, for entrepreneurs, investment, and innovation. But uh, what do we bring on the table when we are talking about uh, uh, U.S. companies coming here uh, in our region? Basically, the first thing, as I mentioned, is that uh, you, uh, we opened the access to the Upper Rhine region here in Strasbourg. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's a region recognized for the intense research and the excellence of the research. 
uh, if you want a comparison, for example, there is more research here in the Upper Rhine region than there would be in Paris, which is a worldwide reference in, in that matter. Uh, but we also uh, have the, the, the benefit of having a, a good networked ec ecosystem uh, across borders. So basically, uh, we also we always have the opportunity, even on one side of the border, you don't find the, the business opportunity. Well, it's right accessible on the other side of the border and both sides are really working together hand in hand to be able to make sure that happens. Um, and uh, also in, in around that, that region, we uh, basically, we work with Innovo from Boston here uh, to make sure that uh, you would be able to access this market in a very competitive way, in a very fast way. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's a very condensed area, but it's also a, a very high uh, potential and uh, area. The other thing that we bring here in the plate on the table is basically as Strasbourg have been working for many years uh, developing the different kind of network. Um, being uh, the, 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 the capital of the great East region and the capital, uh, European capital, basically, we have that uh, local, national, uh, regional and national network that will uh, include all the innovation hubs uh, we have a well-renowned university, but that like a lot of territory. But the importance here is basically we have those innovation agencies, the technology transfer uh, offices, clusters all around uh, health, sustainable development, mobility. We have incubators, but at the same time, we have these business development and prospection agencies and the international representation we're talking about. And uh, um, the, the Euro metropolis of Strasbourg is definitely making sure that all these actors are working together on a very uh, complementary uh, strategy. And then basically we, are, we have a coherent approach when we welcome uh, foreign investors or company. And that's a little bit the role that we're playing. But at the same time, we've been working on developing international networks, especially on the innovation level. And for example, we are developing international partnerships as we did uh, with Boston 60 years ago this year but also with Houston or San Diego we also have uh, and those are just a few examples of course we also have um, a partnership with Canada with uh, Montreal for example on, on the health sector with uh, uh, some of the new innovation and development going on there but also with the city of Quebec uh, but on a, on a more uh, closer from us we have a partnership and sisterhood Cities with Germany, like with city like Stuttgart, for example, who is also renowned for, for example, the automotive industry, but also the chemical industry. And we are continuing, uh, all that is uh, ongoing, and we have uh, uh, we, we have a lot of discussions going with Japan, with Israel. So basically, we have that multi-layered network, and we are able to coordinate all that on a very global business approach. And, and that's something that as, as the collectivity, as the city of Strasbourg, we can bring here on the table and work with you on, that, uh, on those aspects. But we also like to lead uh, on the local soft landing. And we have a program for that called Explore Strasbourg. Basically, it's a customized soft landing program for a lean way to the European market. Uh, of course, it's the whole team, it's a whole ecosystem working together. And we try to answer specific needs uh, so if you have needs to discovering the dynamic of the European market, testing new markets, developing your network of partners, or prototyping your product, or organizing clinical tests, clinical tests um, th these are the things that we're basically working with you, uh, we're working on with you. Um, so how do we help, basically? We give ourselves between one and six months, basically, to help you find the best location for your project. Uh, that means uh, or working in partnership with a, a big company or to, uh, uh, to find uh, an, an incubator or another location for you that fits your project. We find also key contacts for you to develop your business, including some of our networks with the French German experts, which can be really uh, useful when you want to go on those markets. We also get for you that technical support that you will need, definitely need, when you go to look for funding for uh, European funding because it's very specific, but at the same time, with the proper resources, it becomes something that is much more approachable and we, we provide you with that technical support. Uh, we also work on that customized coaching to help you along the way through soft landing teams to ensure a speedy return on investment because that we understand is something that is important for any kind of business um, person coming here is to make sure that within a very short time, basically they can see the market and what they'll get out of it. 
Um, and at the same time, that's uh, more on the side, we find in some of the first installation expenditure that you will have coming here in Strasbourg to be able to experience Within six months, we definitely have an evaluation to make sure that uh, you've been successful in finding the proper market or reaching the goal that were set at the beginning. And during all that period, basically, uh, I would be, for example, one of your main uh, contacts, making sure that on the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, operations, you will always have uh, one person that will be available to answer your question, to bring some support. Uh, and it's a very human approach that we are trying to define here. And that's why uh, it's a program that is basically very limited in the quantity of companies that we are accepting because we want to make sure that the follow-up is done uh, properly uh, and uh, definitely answering the, the expectations of the company coming here in Strasbourg. So just uh, the other thing we brought on the table, and I know Nicolas Pellerin will be explaining the whole project uh, later during this month, um, and he's the director of the NextMed uh, uh, campus here in Strasbourg. That's one thing we bring uh, also on the table uh, as the, 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 the NextMed campus, which is a big uh, st strategic investment decided by the city of, uh, of Strasbourg and the Euro metropolis and which makes us the, the leader of the med tech sector headquarters. Basically, in that same location here in Strasbourg, in Strasbourg, you will find all the services you would need to develop a business in that specific sector, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to that uh, project, which has a unique concept. But uh, again, that will be explained a little bit later with, uh, uh, with Nicolas. Uh, but as you can see, that project also is extremely interesting because of the exceptional location. It's really in the heart of the city uh, with a 360 uh, view uh, on the different territories, the uh, border territories of, uh, of Stratford, a way to reach a European market. So basically, we believe that if you want to conquer Europe, you can start here in Strasbourg. So I thank you for your attention. And of course, I'll be available if you have uh, any questions. Excellent. Any questions? Any comments? Anyone? Feel free. We can open up for one or two minutes of questions. And otherwise, we'll move to the Business France presentation. I, hello. Hi, Delphine. This is Joel uh, yes. Berniak. I'm based here in Boston. Um, I just have a quick question for you. You kind of put the emphasis on the medtech uh, sector. Uh, what about the, I would say, let's say the more traditional pharma, biotech uh, sector? What, um, what are the strengths of the region in that particular area? Well, um, that's right. I put the, 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 the more, more emphasis on the medtech because that's one of the projects where really the, the Strasbourg has the leadership. So uh, we, are, we, we basically know how to bring uh, the different actors but for other traditional sectors of course and that's what uh, on the for example on the health sector you will see uh, Guillaume later will present uh, with Bio Valley uh, the the fact that there is a more diversified, uh, diversified approach of health tech we also have uh, a, a new uh, approach of health by, by itself uh, including uh, digital health and uh, developing a new approach to prevent for prevention uh, that works into like a longer term strategy um, so it's, it's, of course, it's diversified and, and digital definitely plays a big role in, into that, uh, that field as well. But we're also de developing other type of sectors like sustainable development. So that is really key today in whatever sector you work with. So uh, there is definitely different approaches and I would be more than happy to exchange longer with you about that. As I, I still have to do, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. So, any more questions or comments? Hi, Delphine. Nice to see you again. Hi. Uh, um, so, can you give me an order of magnitude about how many startups, uh, medtech or life science med slash medtech, and uh, startups are coming out of Strasbourg yearly, more or less? Just you know, a rough, really, really rough number. At this point, if I talk about our incubator, um, I would say. Uh, out of the incubator, we, we have about 200 projects per year. 
and uh, out of these 200 projects, um, you will have probably 80% transforming into startups. And out of those 80%, you would have very easily, I would say 70% being startup for the health sectors, and that combines the med tech, but also the digital health uh, startups. So yeah, we are, we are about like a, a, a 80 to 90, uh, considering that 75% of them can be uh, uh, actually setting up right here in Strasbourg. But it's, a, it's an ongoing project. We, are, we have our incubator that is really working to improve and to go a little bit faster, basically, or to develop more projects uh, in the same year. So it's a challenge for any territory, but we, are, we have a very good trend right now. I think uh, we have been progressing every year, so um, we're very optimistic about it. As we know, the, the, for example, the next Met campus is uh, is uh, going to start is, is going to start welcoming uh, companies within the next couple of years. So uh, we need to make sure at, at the same time that we have the companies going coming with it. So the whole ecosystem is working to make sure that we have the critical size of companies. And we <laughs> great thanks. Just, just one question from uh, from me, Delphine. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of uh, of investors, which are like the key the key actors to uh, to support like the scale up of uh, of the startup uh, to extend within the European uh, market and with all these different cultures and different markets. Um, what what can bring uh, Strasbourg on the on the table in terms of investors and in terms of um, of private uh, private uh, sponsors for startups? You mean what would be attractive for these type of actors? Um, what are the existing uh, level of investments uh, from the private and from the public sector in startups? Basi okay, so basically, um, and I'm sure that Business France is going to give a little bit more explanation about that, and you probably know about it. Um, what is interesting is uh, we benefit from uh, all the, the, the public finances and investment uh, uh, companies uh, like uh, BPI and uh, some uh, local uh, investors that is actually combined with public, uh, the public sector. Um, we have uh, business angels communities as well um, that are, are definitely big actors. Uh, lately, we have seen more corporate, especially in the banking industry, uh, coming as sponsors more than, uh, you know, as the financial institution itself. And uh, our goal is really to be able to attract also the transborder investors. Uh, that's also one of the reasons we have that initiative with Alistair and with Boston is to basically make sure that we go further than the very, that the, the I would say the closer, uh, the, the closer um, community of investors from our, our community. So um, it's, it's a typical French, uh, French uh, uh, ecosystem of, of investor, mostly mostly public, but with the layers of private that is really developing and we're working hard to make sure that they're more and more aware of the type of company and the excellence of the companies coming out of, of our ecosystem. Thank you. Maybe, maybe to complete uh, the, the answer of Delphine, uh, last year we have some uh, investment in companies um, uh, Coming from US, for example, Morningside uh, invests uh, 15 million in a startup in Strasbourg. Um, so we have some example of foreign uh, investor uh, invest in French company. In and, and Japan Strasbourg also. Company. Japan has Japan been. Too. We had a yeah. few Japan investors coming. They have been very interested, especially in the health industry. Yep. So so basically, the time is up, Delphine. Thank you thank so you much very for much. this presentation. Let's move to Charlotte Abigbol from Business France. Feel free if you have any questions to mark them down in the chat, in the comment, in the WhatsApp. And welcome Charlotte to this call and we look forward to learning more about France. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Can you hear me well? Yes. And can you see my screen? Yes. Great. Well, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Charlotte and I work uh, at Business France in the healthcare team. I'm based in San Francisco and I'm very happy to participate uh, in this webinar and speak about France's attractivity in life science. Um, just having trouble changing my screen.
sorry about that. Um, so indeed, for the first time this year, France was named the most attractive country for foreign investors in Europe in 2019. And this is a major outcome. Uh, France is an increasingly attractive investment location. We had about 1,500 investment projects registered up 11 uh, percent compared with 2018, which is creating or maintaining nearly 40,000 jobs. So more than a confirmation, it's a real statement for us. It reflects the efforts and measures that were put in place by the government. Uh, first, the latest reforms in labor laws and corporate taxations toward more flexibility have most contributed to increasing France's attractiveness. Second, France is ranked at the number one place in hosting R&D uh, activities in Europe. Uh, the number of R&D projects continue to grow significantly. And indeed, France is a country where it's really good to innovate uh, due to the quality of R&D talents, the proximity of French uh, innovation clusters, the potential for research partnerships, but also we have really competitive financial advantages that enhance innovation. Uh, the research tax credits is a perfect example of it. Uh, indeed, these tax credits amount to 30% of our D expenses to support research that is open to companies of any size and from any sector. So partly thanks to this mechanism, France has become a, a true global innovation hub and the life science industry appears as one of its flagships. Indeed, uh, France is the first country for access to healthcare in OECD and key figures really speak their truth. Uh, France is recognized as the world's best healthcare system by the World Health Organization and has among the highest expenditure in OECD. As such, life science have always been a central industry in the French economy, with more than 3,000 established businesses in France, and innovation in life science is really key in the country. Indeed, 13 recipients of the Nobel Prize were, of Medicine uh, are French, uh, while numerous medical work firsts have taken place in France, such as the first carotid stain implant in 1990, the first partial face transplant in 2005, or the first car mount artificial heart implant in 2013, and many more. As the second largest consumer market in Europe, and with nearly 90 billion revenues uh, generated by the life science industry, France is uh, an innovative gateway to Europe, uh, first, uh, clinical research in France is renowned for its strong expertise. Uh, as a result, France is the first uh, European country in numbers of clinical trials, with 10% of world's clinical trials. And the country hosts the APHP, uh, which is the largest hospital group and clinical research center in Europe. Moreover, French research organizations are among the best in Europe and in the world. Uh, France and the US are the only two countries to have an uh, organization in CIMAGO's top 15 healthcare research institutes. So whatever the sector, uh, France shows attractive key figures uh, highlighting how innovative the French health industry is. Uh, in biotech and biopharma, France is the fifth largest pharma market in the world, and on the top of it, Euronext, uh, which is located in Paris, is the number one European stock market for health tech. Now, regarding um, the French medtech industry, uh, France is uh, second in Europe for medical devices revenues after Germany. And finally, France is pretty active in digital health. Uh, the National eHealth Strategy 2020, uh, which was initiated by the French government, uh, really supports the digital transformation of the healthcare system and special attention should be paid on artificial intelligence. Uh, France has actually become one of the most attractive hubs for AI in digital health uh, after Facebook, uh, which opened its first AI research center outside of the US in Paris in 2015. Uh, Google and Microsoft have both announced plans to create dedicated AI centers in France in the field of health. So healthcare innovation in France is also reflected on regional levels. Um, indeed, as you can see on this slide, uh, there are seven key innovation clusters in France uh, with uh, different specialties for each one of them. Uh, all those clusters gather big public and private organization. Uh, we have Sanofi in Lyon Biopol, Ibsen in Medicine, Merck in BioValley, etc. 
Finally, uh, some of the biggest biopharma companies recently announced uh, they would increase their investment in France in 2020, which is great news. And it's mostly thanks to the global innovative ecosystem that is in place. Uh, for example, uh, Biogen intends to hire new employees, uh, mostly in R&D, to work on Alzheimer and biosimilars. Uh, Beckton Dickinson will invest an additional 176 million euros over the next four years. Amgen also announced the launch of Amgen Innovations in France to scout innovation over there. Uh, finally, Regeneron partnered with Sanofi to expand clinical trials in the US and outside the US to test a potential treatment for the COVID-19 virus. Well, that was a short overview of uh, France as a global innovation hub uh, in healthcare and life science. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, here at Business France, we offer free and confidential services to assist uh, foreign companies uh, who want to develop their business in France, either through implantations or the collaboration or financial investments, etc. Our North American team is based uh, in San Francisco, Boston, and New York. So really feel free to reach out if you need any help, support. And uh, finally, uh, we'll be there at uh, the events uh, Prigalian in October and GP Morgan uh, Healthcare Week. So feel free to join us. Uh, we'll be there to support both French and North American companies. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you. So this opens the floor for questions. Any questions, comments, thoughts before we move to Bio Valley? Um, hi, uh, Alistair, this is Pat O'Shea. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, Patrick. Hello. Great. Hello, uh, Pat O'Shea with IC Med. Uh, we are a digital health uh, company. Um, and I was going to ask the question you know, a lot of the discussion revolved around the manufacturers, uh, you know, therapeutics or devices, you know, BD, Biogen, Amgen, et cetera. Um, what about the um, leaders in the uh, delivery of care um, in terms of the relationships that they try to strike with innovative companies trying to do business in France? I'm talking about uh, perhaps the, um, uh, the hospital systems or others that uh, are, um, delivering care directly to patients. So you're asking uh, whether there, there are also companies like this that expand in France? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, or, or French companies more likely uh, that are looking for companies like us to deliver our, serv to deliver our innovative services to them. Sure, there is definitely a need uh, in uh, in the management of uh, of hospital systems, um, so really uh, we we can discuss this uh, further uh, if you if you're interested uh, in delivering this service to France. There there is definitely a need, and there are French companies that are working on it. Uh, but there is not one solution uh, that is really above all of the others. So I think there is room for others. Very good. Thank you. We, we will follow up. Thank you. Thank you. So, so and then also, Patrick, you know, for, for that, that, that particular question, you know, Business France, the U.S. Embassy, the Strasbourg Soft Landing have all their networks with hospitals and, and with such organizations. So, you know, you have access to a real large network through this uh, platform. Very good. Thank you. And we're already working on the Strasbourg side with Guillaume, who's next, at connecting you uh, with the, the various hospitals. So you'll get now an overview. So now that we've covered Strasbourg, then we did France. Now we're moving on to Europe. Uh, and we're very lucky and grateful to have actually representative from our uh, neighboring countries in Strasbourg. So Bordeaux, Alexandre from Denmark. We have Brussels also that's going to be watching this. And other country, Basel, I think Martin, you're here too from Basel, Switzerland. So it's really good, good to have you. And Guillaume is now the presenter of Bio Valley. And he's going to explain what this is about. And uh, hopefully you'll find this very useful. Guillaume, the floor is yours. I think you're on uh, mute. Yes, minutes. sorry. 10 minutes presentation, five minute questions, and then uh, we'll okay. open for questions. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Guillaume from BioValley. Uh, welcome in Europe and in the BioValley. BioValley is two things it's an area and a cluster. 
just to introduce the area. Uh, we are in the uh, earth of uh, Europe, uh, Europe representing uh, 7,020 uh, uh, million Euro uh, European consumer. And the place of Bio Valley area in Europe, uh, it's the highest density in healthcare research. You have uh, more than uh, 15,000 uh, researchers uh, in the area, uh, more than 6,800 uh, PhD every year in, uh, in, in the uh, area, more than um, 100,000 uh, students in the area were studying in uh, healthcare, and over than uh, 1,700 companies uh, near the, the Bayo Valley um, area. We have also uh, ensure uh, companies uh, in pharma biotech. You have Sanofi, Merck, uh, GSK, Bayer, Roche, uh, Boehringer, Ingenheim, uh, Pfizer, Nova Novartis. In medtech, uh, GE Healthcare, Medtronic, Intuitive Surgical, Siemens, the Brown, and Thermo Fisher Scientific and IQVR uh, for the uh, CRO in clinical trials. What is BioVia cluster now? Uh, it's a European care uh, accelerator. Uh, our mission is uh, to take care of citizens by accelerating healthcare uh, business in Europe. And how we make that, uh, we connect to the world business. We have a, a, a very, very important network in the world. Uh, you can find uh, care access uh, in the hospital, in the clinic, in France, in Germany, in uh, Switzerland. Uh, we can also connect you to businesses, uh, Sanofi, Merck, uh, IQVIA, over 1,700 uh, companies in the area. We also give you access to capital, uh, local capital like uh, Capital Grand Est, Kajuba, uh, Région Grand Est, uh, Strasbourg, uh, but also uh, with other uh, investors uh, like uh, Seventure Capital or Curma Partners. Uh, after that, if you need to access to talents and research, uh, we have uh, access to uh, the Eurocore. It's about the five major universities in the Bio Valley area working together. Université de Strasbourg, Université de Haute Alsace, and uh, you can access to big institutes like IRCAD for the surgery or GBMC if you need to access to uh, biological uh, uh, competences, etc., uh, etc. Et and we have also an international network uh, working with uh, medicine for uh, to access to priory, for example, but Technion in Israel. GBA in Japan, uh, Inovo in Boston, uh, BioWin in uh, Belgium, uh, BioValley Germany to access to Germany and BioPro in Germany, BioValley Basel in uh, Switzerland, TransMedTech and MedTech in uh, Quebec. Uh, and we have also access to uh, incubator and accelerator like Semia. Uh, Semia is the first incubator in HealthTech in France and Grantinov is uh, an accelerator in the region Grand Est. Uh, why we participate to the Boston Strasbourg Initiative? Because uh, it's important for us to connect uh, the ecosystem, the healthcare ecosystem, because we are on a world market and so we have to access to the, the major uh, market. So it's important to link uh, USA to Europe. And so that the reason why we participate to the uh, uh, partnership between uh, France and uh, United States. Our team, uh, the, the general manager is Marco Pintore, and we have a team of uh, experts working on biotech, working on digital health, working on medtech. Uh, so if you need to access uh, to a network in particularity, you can uh, ask uh, BioValet to find the right expert to uh, coach you and to introduce you to the, to the, the contact you need. What we do, uh, we are your personal advisor uh, at each step of your de development. Uh, if you are in the de development phase, we can introduce you to a technology partner. We can give you access to clinicians. Uh, when you improve your product, we can give you access to regulatory affair a partner, uh, hospital, uh, patient, etc. And after that, if when you, you put your technology on the market, we can act, uh, we can coach you and give you the access to the major institute to help you to have the market access in Europe. 
Uh, we also work on uh, territory projects, uh, for example, three projects. Uh, the first one is Territoire de Santé de Demain. Strasbourg becomes the French experimentation territory for new health care approach and represents France in Europe initiative for the new health model. Uh, it's a project uh, on eight years and the budget is 116 million euros uh, during the eight years. Uh, the next project is NextMed. It's the health innovation headquarter in Strasbourg, regrouping major health research center, the main grand health hospital, uh, Strasbourg Hospital, and companies. Uh, and the budget for the moment uh, is 1 billion euro invest in infrastructures in the NextMed project. And the last one is uh, Xilink. It's a French-German initiative. It's a platform for translational research uh, with University of Strasbourg uh, in France, University of Heidelberg in Germany and Sanofi. And the budget was about 20 million euros. Uh, in uh, 2019, uh, we, are in, uh, we are involved in uh, 12 international events more than uh, 3,400 participants and a lot of new business opportunities. We also uh, are company, uh, companies uh, to uh, fundraise 60 million euros and we have selected 14 uh, SMEs. We coach them and we have access to finance uh, during the last year. And how we, how we collaborate together, it's, most, it's very simple, it's like Google. When you have some needs, uh, you can contact iNovo. Uh, we sign an NDA with iNovo. We define and qualify your needs with iNovo. And after that, we work with iNovo to give you a response uh, of the feasibility phase in two days. And after that, one week later, we can come back with proposal of uh, connection. So it's very, very easy to work with uh, BioValet and in iNovo. Some examples, uh, for example, BioDataBank, it's a Japanese uh, company. They want to uh, found a strategic partner to experiment and validate their solution with uh, seniors. So uh, the experimentation starts in uh, this uh, summer. Uh, so it's very, very cool. Uh, we also work with IQVIA. Uh, they want to develop a clinical trial uh, with uh, Strasbourg Clinic uh, on cardiac, uh, cardiovascular disease. And so we uh, make the contact between uh, IQVIA and RENA Clinic in Strasbourg, and they start the uh, clinical uh, trial with 20 patients. Uh, and Medtronic, for example, want to access to innovation, and so we organize personal meeting business, sorry, professional business meetings with five startups in Strasbourg. And to uh, conclude, uh, we are involved in the COVID crisis in France. Uh, we detect the care needs linked to hospital, biological laboratories. Uh, we advised companies to deploy innovation, innovative response like visible patient as uh, uh, is new severity diagnostic uh, in three main hospitals in the Grand Est in one month. Uh, we work with the uh, public authorities to define the technical clauses of call of proposal on uh, COVID test. And uh, like you can see, we uh, reference the initiative, the French initiative against COVID during uh, the, the crisis. Thank you for your attention. And if you have some question, let's go. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Guillaume. Thank you very much. So basically, this concludes the presentation. So basically, the people we've uh, listed for you today is everyone you need to 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 break in the European market in a lean fashion. So you have to, Thomas Molanger from the U.S. Embassy, uh, basically Delphine Krieger, um, uh, Charlotte, and Guillaume, and and also the different people we haven't mentioned. Uh, uh, Bodo, Alexandre for Denmark, uh, Martin for Basel, uh, we have Azel from Brussels. So the idea is to really create a, a, a unique platform that is easy for you to get access to the different opportunities you need. And uh, we'll open up now for questions for Guillaume, but I can tell you having worked with Guillaume already and several of you on the phone, but I can't mention names, uh, we've been able to lock down hospitals, we've been able to lock down some new meetings, 
So it's, it's really a, a great organization, Bio Valley, that has uh, different locations in Europe. So thank you, Guillaume, for, for presenting. Any questions for Guillaume? Any comments? suggestion, ideas also, feel free to, to provide. C can I go first? Um, if there is no, no other question. Um, what about um, programs for companies that uh, bring on the table an innovation for the, for, to fight the crisis? Uh, do, can, can they access like fast tracks or uh, can they access uh, like clinical pool of patients uh, through your, your organization and uh, do they do they need to come with uh, uh, all the money or can you help them to, to to get their proof of concept with you we can help them to define and to find a public fund to help them to make uh, an experimentation uh, there is some public fund to uh, to, to be uh, to, to access and if they need to find a partner to have a clinical trial, for example, uh, the severity diagnostic uh, from visible patient, uh, they deploy the clinical trial on the three hospitals in, in Strasbourg, in Mulhouse and Nancy. And we can give access to this uh, kind of uh, hospital to, to help the companies to define the protocol and after that we identify the, the patient to enroll in the clinical trial. And this concerns all companies uh, from all around the world, like US, yeah. Asian? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Hello, hello, Guillaume. This is Joel Berniak from, uh, from Boston. Uh, nice to see you again. If you remember, we met uh, maybe a couple of years ago, a few years back in Boston. I have a quick question for you. At some point, you mentioned different projects. One of them was... Um, the sector de la santé or something like that. And you mentioned that it has a budget of 117 million euros or something like this. So concretely, what does that mean? Does that mean that it helps, it funds proof of concept studies, it gives grants? When you say that a, a project like this has such a budget, concretely for startup companies, what does it mean? Uh, there is two uh, two ways. The, the objective of the project is uh, to make Strasbourg become uh, an experimentation territory, uh, deploying new innovation and tests uh, directly and uh, have a feedback on some uh, indicators, uh, economic indicators, uh, medical in indicators and social indicators. And there is a public fund uh, subvention to finance some projects, but the um, major uh, part was in investing in uh, startups. So when you say so investing, you mean investing as an equity investor or yes. investing by giving research grants? No. Oh, actually investing, investing. yes, okay. direct oh. in equity. For companies, startups that would probably collaborate or do a partnership with, with, with a project or a company in the Bio Valley region, right? No, no, you can be a foreign. Uh, there is uh, uh, Palo Alto companies in the project, for example, and we have another company in uh, Montreal in the project. And okay, but they collaborate they create, with the local. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. Any, any more questions or comments, suggestions? So, uh, just to comment, please go ahead, Nick. Okay. So we have a, I, you know, we have a lot, as an angel group, we have a lot of uh, med tech companies that come in. And, um, you know, we're hoping to, to get a beachhead in, in France, of course, in Strasbourg. But, um, but for the, Immediate, immediately, there are, for example, I've got two companies, two me, uh, medical device companies that are interested in Europe. Um, they have just got their 510s done in, um, in, in the US. So what would be the best way to, for them to use your resources or get, in fact, get uh, potentially equity from you guys, just out of curiosity, or market entry? The easiest way is to uh, 
have contact with Alistair. He defines and qualifies the needs. And after that, we work with uh, Alistair to define the, the best and the uh, most special response to your needs. So it depends on what you need. If you need to access to uh, investors, uh, we can give you access to uh, capital grant test, uh, the, the uh, investment in the grant test, or uh, seven venture capital, or Curma, uh, for example. If you need to access to technologies, we can give you access to the SAT Connectus. It's the first TTO in France. Uh, if you need to access to patients, uh, we give you access to hospital and clinics. So it is. Uh, it depends on what you need, and, and that's uh, the, the best way to to work on is to uh, define the, the needs with Alistair, and Alistair, we make the link with Alistair after that. Yep, so so basically, Nick, the, the simplest way to, to explain it, we have a soft landing team, so the whole ecosystem gets together, so we have several companies here, for example, Patrick and Richie from ICMED or other corporate groups, and they have business needs, so we understand the business needs, and then we define what is the strategy. And sometimes we'll think, we'll decide also there's no route forward, but if it goes forward, we'll make sure they exit. Um, uh, that's, that's the idea. So you have a soft landing plan and soft landing team, which is basically Guillaume. Delphine Krieger, Emmanuel Poteau from the SAT Connectus and Innovo. And we help also with Delphine Krieger, make sure you know we, we have quick timelines. So right now we're quite under pressure, knowing we owe a few answers to Patrick from ICMED, from, for Richie and for the other startups. And we source also with our network partners from Basel, Brussels. So that's why the, the other groups are there like Bodo, uh, Martin, Azel from Brussels, so we then go into their network who have similar ways of working and you quickly sp spread and, and get access to the European networks. So based on your needs, if it's hospital, we'll find access to hospital. If it's research you're looking for in uh, universities, we'll help you give us the criteria. If it's uh, investment in medtech, biotech, digital companies, we'll help you also find you know, which ones they are, finding a proof of concept. So it's really custom based and the soft landing team is there to execute the plan. Uh, Alistair, this is Patrick. Um, I, I think you're actually being very humble. Um, you guys have already been very helpful to us and uh, um, just to let the others know, uh, Alistair and Guillaume have put their heads together and have given us a short list of some initial contacts that they think will be helpful to us and so we're in the process of putting together our first discussions. Um, for us, as a digital health company, one of the things that we're concerned about is the, um, uh, the regulatory issues associated with doing business in France and greater uh, EU. And so we're going to be talking to a person in the legal field uh, about GDPR and the parallels with HIPAA in the U.S., and so uh, we are well on our way. And thanks to Alistair and Guillaume for um, the good start. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. So any more questions, comments? Again, thanks everyone for being here. And also for those looking for funding, you know, don't hesitate. We have Nick, uh, you know, with his business angel group. There's a pitch next week, right, Nick? I think your group is having a, an investor event next week. Yes, we are. Yep, so, so Nick is there, Lemuel Lim, uh, who is our VC analyst from HLM Venture, might also be a, a good contact for when it comes to, to venture capital. I'm just looking, um, okay. Any, any more questions, comments? Otherwise, I think we can resume the call. Alexandre? I would just would like to thank for organizing this and uh, just highlighting that it's great to have this EU initiative as the, the like all the, the continents are, you know, dealing with their own uh, sanitarian uh, situation. And uh, yeah, I think it's good to, to, to highlight Europe at this time. Well, thanks for being there, Alexandre. So Europe is coming together here and it's a, it's a start. So we're looking forward to Thank you all. So let us know how we can help access Europe and we will.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.